I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, the cold team in the northwest face the hot team in the southeast. Let's go and meet them. In the air position for cold team, this is Kidoka. He's 991 rated. He's Seraphim in Mauve. Down here to his left, we have Blythdrug, which is Welsh for Bad Wolf, and was a whole thing during the run of the Ninth Doctor in Doctor Who, so I'm going to assume he's a fan of that. Either way, he's 1406 rated, he's Seraphim in Baby Blue. And up here on the right for Cold Team, we have Star Commander, who is 1233 rated, and Cybron in Dark Blue. And Hot Team. In the air position for Hot Team, and actually going first air, is Zelnaga. Didn't they uplift the Protoss in StarCraft? Something like that. I didn't really play much StarCraft. Either way, he's 1,088 rated, he is orange, and he is UEF. On their left flank, we have Varus. Varus is 1215 rated, he's Cybron in Burgundy, and last but not least, walking forward here, this is Han. He's 1313 rated, also Cybron in Red. Quick look at the map. Reclaim. There are naval yards here and here to pick up, and Han has already got an NG on his way to get that very early. That was his third NG off the blocks, if I look at the timings. And so he's very worried that Star might come and get it. But there's also decent amounts of reclaim just scattered everywhere, so it's not a huge thing that it's essential to grab. Still, Blythe has been a little later, but he's still sending dudes to get it. Expansions. Obvious expansions here and here, which the front players for each team are likely to get, and then these slightly more contestable flank expansions quite close to each other, but a little further away from the players. Labs and Scout out from Virus, who is very nicely positioning them here so that they're not been seen by the com in its obvious position and will be able to sneak past. Bomber out from Star. With a scout, I approve of this, the scout comes after the bomber and then overtakes it. And he's going to get an NG pickup with this unless there's some great dodging from Han, which there isn't. However, Zell has seen it. He's locked an inti onto it, and that's going to get shot down before it gets any more damage. Meanwhile, this lab raid from Varus sees an engineer coming not to pick up the reclaim, which I think he was expecting, but to build a radar. Either way, he's going to take it out. And then scuttle on. Just a little bit. He's being quite tentative with those labs. I think he needs to be rushing in here, since Blythe's com is up front, he needs to rush in here and try and get some NG kills. Or come here and pick this up perhaps? Either way, he's not moving them for now, I think that's a mistake. Radar going up for Blythe with the engineers that picked up the naval yard, just so he can see what's going on. Han is being more aggressive and has sent his engineer to build the mexes and then a point defence out here, and he's also supporting it with labs. Star coming out for this one. Virus coming out for both of these, undefended, so that feels a bit of a a bit of a, a risk to take, but he's also pushing in here to distract Blythe, and therefore he's it's paying off. This boy is coming in unmolested to get these mexes. Another nice lab raid coming up here for Han. And he's doing the same as Varus did. He's sneaking it round the side so the commander won't see it and shoot it down. 
but we have another bomber over here and we have a raid coming in here so I think we need to go to split screen so here on the left this raid is looking like it's going to get an immense amount done because this is only producing NGs and there are four here to kill over here this expansion from Star is being locked down by Han who's going to take it out whereas here Star's raids are taking out Han's expansion so a little trade there but is that going to be five now because another one rolled off the blocks and there would better be some yes there's a lab coming out but five NGs is an amazing pickup here these boys need to notice that there's one more mechs here and take it out because Star has certainly noticed the same mechs for Han and will kill it tanks now coming to shut down the labs but I think they're going to get another mechs and they do but Star is able to clean this up these boys are now just sitting here and these boys have utterly taken out Han's mechs here so back to single screen and down here in the south Virus is pushing in with a decent amount of spam on Blythe both of them are naked but I think Virus has the more spam but the less immediately available production capacity I like this though, he's moving his spam on one side and the comm on the other so the comm can come in and just pick up factory and mech kills while Blythe moves over to this side and Varus retreats the spam before Blythe can kill too much of it but now Varus's comm is on his own here there isn't enough spam from Blythe to actually worry him though and Blythe's comm is no faster than Varus so Varus should be fine up here Star has sent units to shoo Han off his expansion and Han has sent units to shoo Star off his expansion so the two are trading places yet again Han already has gun and Star is going for T2 but while Star has a lot of spam over here and Star has invested much more into air than Han Han is pushing forward so this could actually be a danger for Star who hasn't finished his upgrade who's got a gun comm approaching him with much more spam and just now we saw Zera has started the Tech 3 air upgrade which is pretty fast whereas Kid hasn't even finished his T2P gen so that could be an early advantage for Zell but back to this fight here where Medusa are just smashing through what little defense there was one point defense for Star is Star going to be forced to cancel his upgrade? I think he might which at 79% is not a nice thing to have to do yes he cancels and he has to run Meanwhile down in the south, Blythe and Varus both going for gun upgrades, both massing decent chunks of span, but Varus still has these two expansions completely uncontested. Over here, Star is trying to do the same thing and he's dropped both these expansions with engineers from a transport and he's got these boys sat here to defend. But Han is doing very well on the spam front and as well as this where he's now stopped and is consolidating on the position from which he drove Star. He's also got a decent amount of spam heading up this way so I don't know for how long Star will hold on to this. And this little NG has come across the water and put up a factory here. So that could be a nasty surprise for Star if he doesn't get any radar in this area. Over here, Blythe has finally reacted and charged across here with a bunch of spam. Virus is following him 
but not in time to save his expansion. That's a lot here. And while Varus is distracted, Blythe's gun comm pushes in. Varus is rooted to the spot on stealth. So Blythe can pick things up at leisure and he continues pushing around here. Since these units are no f faster or slower than these, this lot might even be able to get the other expansion as well in a nice little ring around the roses here. And Blythe is bringing up more spam which might threaten virus. However, I see Han raiding over there, so back to split screen. Here on the left, Blythe has got into this further expansion of Virus, and this is going to cost him, but his com is up here advancing with spam. So this is great from Blythe, but look at this from Han. Han has smacked out these mexes and expansion from Star, but Star is defending with T2 tanks and Kid is helping out with bombers. Meanwhile, Star is locking these down, but there are Medusa massing here. On this side, Blythe is absolutely pushing Varus off here because all his spam is over here. And the spam comes back, but it's coming in trickles, it's splitting up. This is very unfortunate for Varus, who may lose even more. There is a T2 mix here that he could end up losing. However, he's not wasting any time in re-dropping engineers. I expect they're going, yes, look, they're going out here. So he wants these back, and he's going to get it as fast as possible. And Blythe sees all these things on the map. There's also bombers coming in from Zona Naga. And he doesn't stay to pick this up. He falls back. Han, though, has just run on and he's come in behind Kit. However, Kit has put up a T2 PD and Star uses that transport to drop a Rhino in. So those are going to be cancelled before they can hurt anything here. Let's go back to single screen. So we can see down here that Blythe did take out that T2 mech and another T1 mech. So this was huge equal damage, but here's Virus dropping it again. His raid has been taken out, but at what cost to Virus? And Virus is calm, looking a little in danger there, though. Blythe is rooted to the spot, getting nano, so this is only T1 spam, and Virus should have no problem taking it out with his gun stealth comm. Up here, Han is not only using these Medusa he's built, but he's coming in in person to evict Star from this area. He'll certainly get this one. Less sure about here because there's a decent number of tanks defending and because Star has these T2 units he can bring in. But this is nice. Han is also redirecting the spam from here and sending it sideways through the middle and it looks like it's catching Blythe unawares. Huge amounts of engineer kills are being picked up there and he's just going to come smashing into the back of this space and because Blythe is still rooted to the spot getting nano, nice coordination as well, Virus pushes in at the same time, Blythe is forced to split up. He finishes Nano though, and which way is he going to go? Well, he's going straight for Virus's com. And Virus, by this means, might be able to save his new expansion here, where he's also put up turrets in defence. Thanks, almost certainly, to Blythe having to send units north. And he, while he will clear up Han's raid, Han's taken out a mech, and most importantly, he's distracted from here. And this looks pretty bad for Blythe, actually. Oh, but we're going to have to split screen yet again because look at Star. So over here, Blythe and Varus both into the yellow, but Varus has more spam, so it could be trouble for Blythe. Over here, Star has pushed forward alone, with gun and stealth but alone, and he is retaking this expansion as Han has fallen back, but Han is repaying the favour up here and he's gonna evict Star. Now Star, he's st he, okay, Star is going to consolidate and rebuild here rather than chase the units down and Blythe has managed to work his way through 
the virus is spam getting a few nice vets on the way while virus has fallen back to go for nano so I think we can return to single screen and you'll remember we saw that air advantage for Zell well he's got three broadswords out with it and that that could be enough to snipe Blythe even with his nano because what is there to counter it well we do actually have a little bit of T3 air up for Kid now and he's been building ASFs which is pretty sensible if you're second to T3 air but we'll see where those broadswords end up going another to sneaky push in here two rhinos from star has again taken out this expansion for Han while his comms up here and aggressive position from Blythe but his spam is still only T1 and we're seeing hoplites and rhinos coming out for virus and those broadswords have absolutely been spotted and they're gonna die but we have to focus down here because look at this again Varus is going to be kicked off this expansion by blind spam especially as his comm is fixed to the spot here by being on the nano upgrade and despite the tech differential Blythe just has enough to wipe Varus off this position especially with his gun nano com charging in there quick check up here he did get a T2 Mex with the broadswords but Zero has lost his broadswords to kids ASFs and Zero brings in a broadsword but it's not going for the com it's going for the spam I guess one broadsword on its own oh, well now it's going for the com for lack of anything better to do and there are T2 PDs defending but I think Blythe can safely fall back if Kid notices and sends in his ASFs, which he does. Over here, Han is trying to retake this expansion yet again by sending in his comm. The rhinos are running away, but they're not Wagner, so they're stuck here and the comm can simply chase them down. Vara sends Inties to counter, but Kid definitely has the air lead at the moment. In fact, are there any ASFs from Zell? I don't think there are. He might have to switch into that. Otherwise, his early air advantage might be gone. But Blythe was taking a few hits in person from these hoplites and from Vara's com. And he falls back a bit. Oh, now this is interesting. Blythe is going to use his comm to come over here and attempt to retake this area. But he's still only got T1 spam. He's still... Okay, this looks this looks pretty dangerous. Blythe, did, did you mean to click that? But he backs off. Faros doesn't want to risk it and backs off as well. Blythe can survive by backing up. And we have tactical missiles out from Han by the looks of things. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. His comm has cleared up those rhinos and again we're getting a little setter down. I think it might be time for a quick eco check. Kid, nice balance. Same for Bly, that's particularly good. Everyone's looking quite nice. Quite an overspend from Zell. We'll see what he's building in a moment. Varus, nice balance. Could do with a little more power. So that's generally all around pretty nice. And we see one TML hit taking out a mix here for, from Star. Star pushing forward. Again, unsupported. What's he going for there? He's bringing engines with him. So is he trying to PD creep? But there are bricks and loyalists. Star, my dude, are you in danger? The bricks attacked. I don't know if he knew that Han had T3, but now he does, and Star's immediately into the yellow. He's got PDs to fall back to, but 
Is he going to fall back fast enough? Into the red. 1600 hit points. But he's under the shield. Three bricks might be enough to take it. They get through the shield. But Star's falling back and looks like Han is going to be content just to wipe Star off this position. Over here, Ilshi Runby has just snuck past Virus here. So Blythe has definitely transitioned to T2 in abundance. Look at all those Ilshis. And his Ilshis are taking out this expansion for Virus. His Com is taking out this expansion. So that's a nice little spirit, and these Ilshis are of course faster than the Com, so they can run on and get more work done here. And the Ecos overall are remarkably balanced. Hot Team has collected a little more over the course of the game. That's mainly down to... Star having lost Eco is the reason that they're behind, and that. Look at that, more tactical missile next kills out here. Star is sitting back. He doesn't want to take these bricks, but also he doesn't want to let the bricks in further. But is that a tactical missile? My dudes, I think we're about to see an attempted tactical missile snipe on Star's comm. He does have nano, but he's been injured. Boom! Tactical missiles take out Star, our first ejection at 21 minutes. Kid sends Vothu gunships to take out the bricks. And Blythe gives Star's stuff to Kid, so Kid is managing one side and Blythe the other. And the bricks fall back, but they're going to be taken out by these gunships. However, Zell has been building up ASFs, and so he may be able to counter those gunships. And the gunships are just landing, having let the bricks walk away. Apart from this one... Oh, there we go, they pick up again. Kid does have a few ASFs, but I think Zell has been focusing on them and has built more. And Zell has now got three factories in his air grid. Kid has only two, but Kid is building a chicken, so that might swing things a bit. Again, Virus sends out engineers to retake these expansions. But here's the air fight going down. The gunships are landed and need to be just flying away, but these ASF from Kid, come on Kid, do some micro. You're going to lose if you don't take off those guns gunships and those ASFs. I think that's an air loss for Kid. And Kid's been rebuilding the T the um TMD doubt. TM er doubt mexes up here. But they're only T1 but Han is misshelling them yet again. We need to see some TMD up here. There's one here, two here for Kid, so his base will probably be safe. But factory goes out. Looks like two T1 mixes and the radar are going to go out. Oh, that was a miss, but two T1 mixes go out. Live pushes back in, but Virus also has T3. However, these are all Ilshis. Ilshis are nearly T3. They're, okay, they're T2, but they're nearly T3 is my point. And with the gun and nano and five vets on Blythe's comm, I think he might be able to push Virus back. And those PDs and those loyalists, though numerous, aren't numerous enough. Virus is falling away. In fact, Virus might be about to die. He's into the red. 1,800. Boom! Virus is our second ejection, mobbed down by Ilshis and Blythe's Com at just under 25 minutes. Meanwhile, Zer has spotted that, that chicken, which is still under construction. Han inherits the flank, so now we've got 
side vote and side for the two players in the north versus front and back for the two players in the south. And Blythe just leaves his com walking in, bores out, smashing up the PDs because a gun nano com with five vets can easily take T2 PDs. And there's a little bit of artillery coming in here, but as long as Blythe keeps moving, he should be fine. And we've got gunships also in support here. But they feel dangerously out of position. Kid does bring his ASFs in, but Zell still has more. Yeah, look at that. That's a huge horde of ASFs, and they're just going to mash those gunships. Kid doesn't respond, he knows he'd lose that. The Oshis are pushing in though, and they're getting T2 mechs kills, that I think they might get as many as three here. There are bricks coming out, but I don't know if that's enough bricks, because of just how tough an Oshi is. Two T2 mechs is dead, is he going to get the third? Yes he is. Nice. And rather than try and take on the bricks, of which there are now five, the Oshis head into the flank where they're going to get more dead. So Blythe has been doing excellent work just continually bashing this flank and not letting what used to be Vows and is now Han getting set up there. The chicken, meanwhile, is done. Chicken attack time. Here it comes, stomping forward. Nice little cinematic shot there. Look into its eyes, my dudes. Look into its eyes. And it's heading out here. Hans Com has retreated to the water. Han is pointing out that Blythe's Com is right there. And Zera, now that he's got air superiority, is again building broadswords. I think that's the right choice. Broadswords are pretty brutal. And as long as he can keep the air in, he could probably take out Blythe no problem. Blythe, however, will equally have no problem overrunning this with this big horde of Ilshis. You need to secure a left side or you'll lose on eco, says Varus, and he's not wrong. Code team are actually ahead in eco now, but Han is busy using his T1 to raid up here. However, the chicken's here, there are also bricks here, and I don't think this raid is going to get much done. However, this engine needs to remember to rebuild over here because Han TML those things out. In fact, Han's TML, which has got 2500 mass killed is still up and able to fire. The chicken is pung. That's a dangerous force and it should easily be able to wipe this out. Oh, this looks bad for Blythe though. Not only is he engaging in a shooting match with five bricks, which even a gun nanocom wouldn't win, but these broadswords could just pop across and snipe him, but they don't choose to. And Zera is going for the billy. Now you know we love to see a bit of Billy Boy out and about. And let's see whether this little Billy will be forced to go home. Or whether I can extend that sweet reference any further. I will not. It's a good song, but there's only so much you can get out of it. Woof. Now the Ilshis are trying to rush the bricks down, but I think there's enough here that the bricks will be able to take it. Actually I say that, but they're not responding. Oh, there they go. And if they can kite back like this, then I think they'll kill off the Ilshis and there's gunships coming in. There's one second there, but against that many broadswords, that's just going to get cleared up, no problem. And we don't have time to worry about this because the chicken is getting into the front of Han's lines here with a vast horde of bricks. Help, says Han, and he's gonna need it. The broadswords should be redirected over here because I think the bricks in the south can deal with those Ilshis. I think the broadswords need to come in here, but there is a decent amount of T3 anti-air backing up the chicken and Kid is ready to respond with his ASFs as soon as anything comes in that's more dangerous the chicken than these ASFs. 
It's taking a lot of damage and it needs to be moving. This this um chicken needs to come in and start shooting stuff rather than staying back. It's about to get a vet though and it's gonna need it. Ooh, kid did not take the need to take that fight and that's a bad turn, especially with these anti-airs further back. The broadswords come in and there was never a better time to come in with the anti-airs further back and Zoe having just won that fight. And that chicken is being shredded. The broadswords quickly turn their attention to the anti-airs and they get through them fast because that's just such a mess of broadswords. Is it critical mass? Maybe. We'll have to find out. I would almost be tempted to bring that chicken back so it's easier to reclaim. Han has popped out of the water here and he's been noticed. But he can easily duck back in. Brick torpedoes might do the job if, it, if they just sent all the bricks over here, chased Han, chased him into the water. And also under the water, these gunships couldn't shoot them. But it feels like there's enough here to stop the bricks before they get anything actually done. T3 mechs might go down. T3 mechs does go down, that's nice. And of course, this mechs went out. Hans bringing his common, which with only gun, no nano, is pretty bold, not even stealth. But no, those war swords are going to clean it up. And I d don't. Th we do have another T3 mechs going down. And Code Team are now 120 or so ahead on Eco as a result, which is pretty good. And what are they doing with that eco, you ask? Well, we saw a notification that Kid has started on T3 Arty up here. And we don't have anything similar down here. We have a fatty coming up from Zell. And we have a monkey coming up from Han. And these T3 NGs should be able to eat up this lovely he heap of reclaim that the raid of... I say raid, more of gigantic charge has left from kids units and these boys feel like they shouldn't be up here because they're unsupported by anti-air there isn't it there's one two anti-air tanks in there and they would die in a second to this vast heap of broadswords good work from Blythe here reclaiming the area from which he evicted virus and killed him and which Han hasn't reclaimed but that may be about to change there's a lot of anti-air in there but this does feel like critical mass of broadswords. The anti-air retreats under Seraphim T3 mobile shields, which is nice. And it, it's in range of the broadswords, and the broadswords aren't in range of it. Zera is thinking twice and pulls back. Big horde of T2 NGs getting these points and rebuilding them for Blythe, but Zera isn't going to let that pass. Okay, maybe he is. Maybe he is going to let that pass. Ooh, look at this. This is cheeky, though. Some bricks have come through here and are going to push out of the water. And note that Kid has come down here as well to take Han off this position. But... With Advanced Nano only just started, this could be a problem for Blythe, who is rooted to the spot with six minutes left on this upgrade and nothing really to defend against these bricks popping out. Hand finishes a monkey. The shield goes down. I, if it, taking up this power could be a bit nasty. And he stops to do exactly that. There's a Vurthu coming in from Blythe, but with two T3 Pigeons down and the T3 Mechs about to go down, has that power store Blythe? It hasn't, but he's relying on Kid for power. T2 PDs going up in defence over here, but the bricks look like they might just be able to saunter past. There's still a gunship tickling them, but 
We'll check back on them in a moment because we said that this push here was vulnerable to gunships and boy is it vulnerable to gunships. Over here however, oh the Faki is coming forward but so is Zell and he's got a buoy loaded. These bricks get in the back. There are now more gunships mobbing them down and Kid is bringing his comm forward but the comm is naked however I think the Vothils which are to other gunships as Ilshis are to other T2 units is going to make it. And seeing a monkey and a fatty coming up here, Blythe just runs his units through around here where there aren't monkeys or fatties. That's quite nice. It'll give him a chance to defend and he is going to get to finish his nano. So the fatty continues its push up here, but the monkey sneaks across over here and is preparing to counter this wreck still exists somehow but it is being reclaimed now and How's that arty? That, that arty is nearly finished, so that could spell a problem for the southern team. But look at this huge horde of gunships. What are they going to do? I feel Zell has not been using these boys half enough, given that he's got air superiority. The monkey makes it around, though, and in it comes. This force is a bit of a trickle at the moment, it needs to be a bit more clumped and these boys are a bit further back so that monkey is going to get excellent work done for very little loss of health. And that monkey is just eating them up, all of this force from Blythe might just die and the monkey is still in the green, it's getting vet for free basically. And Kid needs to swarm across and bring it down but he hasn't done so. Well, now he tries it, but with Blythe's force all dead, the monkey is down into the yellow, but it's killing stuff as they come in. There are now bricks in support, there's PD in support, and Kid is falling back with a much reduced force. The fatty pushes forward and Blythe falls back. I imagine he's waiting to lure it in a bit. I think he needs a bit of T2 arty to go up here as a counter to the fat boy because he's not going to hold on to this. And he just needs to stop the fatty before it comes in. I see he's massing nothers though. That could be a good response. And over here, the broadswords are moving out. That's like 30 or 40 broadswords. That must be nearly 10,000 DPS. That's a huge force. The RT is up though and it's firing, but Zell is well shielded. He's, oh no, I say he's well shielded. He's lost a couple of P-Gens. Did that hurt his power balance? He's not great, but he's still just about okay. And the broadswords come in. They must be going for the arty. Kid sends in his ASFs to try and clean it up, but they're just going to get mashed. He's got a lot of Sams in there, though. He's got Sams here. He's building Sams here. He's got Sams here. And he is going to lose some T3 mexes to the broadsword, so maybe they're not going for the RT after all. That's a, three T3 mexes down. And in they come, but there's Sam's here, there's Sam's here. He's trying to take out the Sam's first, but no, he just focuses the power 
generator which goes up and almost causes a chain reaction that would do the damage I think but but the SAMs take out look at that 200 hit points on that pgen 900 on that one 5000 just one more hit on that pgen and that would all have gone up in a huge chain reaction but the RT is still up and firing and it looks like it might be getting through hand shields but it looks like we have quite a lot of shenanigans going on here we have we have a billy launched here while the Nothers go for the fat boy in the first pass the shield stays up boom goes the billy didn't actually get much done because of the seraphim shields but they are certainly forced to fall back over here the second part of the nothers takes out the fat boy but there's another monkey coming up any air defense these nothers could simply refocus the monkey and that's a quite a large contingent of nothers as well from kid backed up by virtual gunships and they sweep down on the monkey SCUs being dropped in rather CUs but what are they going to do against the air build um build SAMs maybe the monkey goes up too so that's two XP's taken out but the ASF's from Zell are out in force and they quickly take out the air raid from the cold team still two XP's down could be worse and let's have a quick check of the ecos because after losing all those TFU mixes up here there is now a 250 eco lead for the hot team because while Kit has been losing mexes, Zell has been pumping out Raz SCUs. And now we have this force being sandwiched between two monkeys. One of the monkeys dies but there's another one undamaged coming up from below and there's still a horde of bricks. So this could spell trouble for Blythe. He does have the nano. Oh, but this is quite nice. There's another horde of bricks massing in the pond, ready to sneak out. Blythe completes a chicken, and chicken on its own beats monkey. But that monkey is supported by an awful lot of bricks, and that chicken is only supported by three or four Othiums. So my money's on the hot team here. Meanwhile, this force advances. And Blythe doesn't know it's there because he's just standing with his com. And sure, it's a double... It's a double nano gun com with five vets so 50,000 hits I will be going for the double gun upgrade and actually using him a bit more aggressively with the chickens kid finishes a nuke the bricks come out but Blythe is getting overcharges in and his they're focusing the pigeon which is quite nice and they will take it out but Blythe is getting overcharges like nobody's business and these are still clumped up. Boom! Look at that. This is perfect defense. I said, actually, that's a lie because you know he lost a pigeon and might be. A, in fact, he lost two pigeons. But you know, his com alone, apart from that PD, killed a few bricks. Where did that monkey go? Oh, so the chicken has one here despite all the bricks, because that monkey is no longer here. That monkey is trying where the bricks have failed and Blythe he can't be aware of it otherwise his com would not be standing there double gun double nano or otherwise and we're getting another push on this side those rascoms are well out of position they're just gonna die no questions asked there the RT is raining down on ham but his shields are enough and there go the rascoms that we spoke about and as if that push on that side weren't enough the chicken is pushing in here so good forcing them to defend both flanks at once but these gunships are still gonna be the deciding factor I think T2 flag, but not much T3 on the left. Rather more T3 on the right. 
but Kid needs to be churning ASFs, and I don't know if he's got the eco to do it, especially as he's now put up a second nuke. But in comes the monkey. Which Blythe hasn't a clue about. Look at that cheeky little sneaky play coming up from under the water. Out it pops, and now Blythe knows about it. He gets a good overcharge on the monkey and he starts running. But his hit points are shedding away. He gets out of the monkey laser range. But the monkey's other gun is still tickling away at him. 17,000 hit points left. He gets another overcharge and the monkey is deep into the red. 4,000 hit points left on the monkey. But it's not enough. Blythe goes down at 45 minutes to a monkey which he almost, almost killed with an overcharge. And that monkey can now wreak havoc. Meanwhile, this lot has retreated. The chicken is still alive and still shooting stuff, but it's stopped its push while Kid, now all alone, worries about the monkey. And while that's happened, we've had the Novaks come out and snipe the arty, but the two nukes are still up, so the arty, it did get a little bit of damage in Han's base and a little bit of damage we saw earlier in Zell's base, but the arty is now dead and Kid is losing his air grid in his comms also out here, I think that is something he needs to fix. With enough point defence, that monkey which was so deep into the red dies, but all eyes have to be on, can these nukes get anything done? And there's another Novax about to go up. That nuke needs to hit here. And there isn't... Oh, there's an SMD loaded. Never mind then. That nuke's not going to hit there. Also an SMD here, but it's not loaded. And I don't see any SMD for Han. This push is taken out by the broadswords. The chicken just dies. The flak is shooting at it. And it's killing some broadswords, but not enough to swing it and this Novax is doing terrible things to poor old kid. Blythe telling kid to get under the shield and so he should. These nukes are nearly loaded. And here comes the second Novax. These Novaxes feel like they're going to be the death knell for Kid. Unless he can get enough nukes to overwhelm those SMDs. And that one, combined with that one, will block the incoming fire. And I don't think that he can. The first nuke is loaded. And it's firing. Where's it going? He's targeted Han's base, which doesn't have SMDs. I think that's getting through. Well, it does have an SMD built in response to Zero pinging the nuke, but it's not loaded. Han starting the laser, which, much as I cast shade upon Cyber and Telemaser play, there's only one com there, there's two comms here, so sacrificing one for one is definitely a good deal in this situation. Bang! Han's base gets flattened. And the second nuke is heading down here, but that's loaded and that's not going to get through. And the Novaxes are just eating up the base here. Poor old kid. Here comes the nuke, but that's loaded and zap! No more nuke. And it looks like the writing's on the wall. Because he's through the base, the nukes are going to go up. He's trying to build shields. But it's not enough. The first nuke goes down. The second nuke goes down and they retarget kids. Come. Look at that, poor old kid, he just wants to get away, he just wants to live his happy little life up in the corner of the map. 
but there is fire raining down from orbit and boom Kid resigns though it was a bit of a foregone conclusion anyway the hot team wins I think it came down to the fact that in the end Kid and Blythe just couldn't keep up with Zell's eco boom and so the nukes could have been done faster perhaps could they have been saved if they'd had a little bit more eco and fired the nukes before that SMD protecting this area went up. What about Blythe? Could he have been more watchful? Do you think he'd have saved it if he'd known that monkey was coming with a couple of scouts and backed off a bit, got in the overcharges earlier? Tell me what you think in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.